our final preliminary heat to decide our final contestant who will very importantly win this and perhaps other exciting prizes delivered by a secret celebrity guest. Mr. Rod Roddy, please tell <laughs> who our final heat is. She's an adjunct pegging instructor at her local community college in, oh yeah, sure, Saskatchewan, Bump Girl! Come on down! <clears throat> now throw it out there. Good. Good, you're good. Ahem. Hailing all the way from, God damn it, Linda, will you just give me a minute, please, Pennsylvania. He's currently working on the Vegas Strip as an Elvis Costello impersonator, Jimmy Frank. Come on down. <laughs> Born on a mountain, raised in a cave, trucking and fucking is all he craves. From opioid crisis, Indiana, Buddy Brand, act surprise. Hey. When he's not teaching at Dick Van Dyke's school for accents, this refined gentleman enjoys officiating cat weddings and nothing else. From Damn It, Bobby, Texas, Stone! Come on down! Come on, Asai. Shit! Yeah! Bump girl! Bump girl, I have many questions to ask you, but the only one that I'm going to ask you at this particular moment is, Bump girl, are you ready to push that button? No. Bump yeah! girl, push that button! This is where the FBI should go. I'm gonna fight. I'm gonna find you and I'm gonna fucking kill Bump you. Bump girl, this is a Reddit of creepy boss activities. Uh, posted to our relationship underscore advice by menu messages, 12 July 2017. Now deleted. Hot. So a little background to start off with. Hot. I work for a nonprofit where I'm the supervisor. Oh, by the way, this isn't me, and this is stuff I'm reading. Um, Hot. Where I'm the supervisor of 10 people that work under me. Last fall, a young woman, let's call her Jennifer, started to work with us through an outside fellowship. Now, she's kind of person that just commands attention as soon as she walks into the room. God, she's hot. No, wait, that didn't say that. Hot. Uh, she's very pretty. Oh, wait, it did say that. Hot. Um, but just has one of those personalities that, like, everyone likes, you know? Hot. I had to train her when she first started out, but was very surprised by how quickly she picked everything up. We do a lot of legal work, and it's not easy for people without previous experience to learn so quickly. So this should give you a good idea of the kind of person she is. I Hot. immediately took a liking to her because of her work, but also how easy she was to talk to. During our training, I would say we became pretty close. 
so much so that I would text her outside of work about non-work related stuff. Also, she sends me Snapchats a lot, random stuff, like shows she's watched like friends do. Yeah, like Joey shows. and Rachel. Yeah. No, friends is not capitalized. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry, buddy. My bad. Hot. We, we even go to happy hour alone sometimes, and I think I am closest to her at work. One time, she even had lunch with my mom and I when my mom was visiting town. So she is someone I consider... Okay, blah, blah. She is someone I consider a very good friend, and I want the best for her. Now, here's the problem. About two months into working with us, I found out she has a boyfriend. Oh, not hot. Not hot. Not hot. How are you going to get Ugh. Not hot. I don't approve of this. That's whole not sex my problem. Thing. All caps, bold to clarify. I do not have any romantic interests and do not care that she has a boyfriend. I really don't care that she has a boyfriend. Yeah. But <laughs> felt a li- yeah. This is not a rap song. Oh no, no. What side? Uh, but felt a little manipulated that she never mentioned him before. (laughs) I am supervisor. Been training her for a few months. We have been talking about a lot of stuff, so it just comes off as hiding something. People (laughs) who work in small offices, Linda, will know what I'm talking about. It was a little hard for me to trust her after that, but I kept it to myself because communication doesn't matter. She was still a great employee and her, her, her having a boyfriend did not change anything because apparently she has been with this guy for five years now. What the fuck? No, uh, he doesn't live in the same city, and they barely see each other, from what I understand. So months go by, and everything is going really well. Yeah, um, so much so that I was even thinking about recommending her for a promotion. We became even closer during this time. This is how the CIA about gets about two your weeks ago. Our parent group is hosted a fundraising gala. I asked Jennifer if she would like to go with me, and she said yes. I always have a great time with her, so I was really looking forward to it. The night of the gala, I called to see when I should pick her up, and she said her boyfriend was in town, and he would drop her off, so she will just meet me there. This is the first red flag I noticed. <laughs> Is this guy that really that insecure that he can't even let her date take her to this gala? Yep. Five years? And this insecure? That's a problem. But I just agree and say, okay, I will meet her there. I get to the gala and start to mingle. Eventually, she eventually gets there, but I don't approach her. Honestly, still pretty bothered by what happened earlier, so I wanted her to come to me and apologize. Yeah, yeah. Don't put the pussy on the pedestal. That's right. That's right. She, she came up to me and we talked, but she never apologized for what she did, but I ignored it, just like a husband. Soon, <laughs> soon we were talking, just like before, and honestly really enjoying each other's company. Is it, is it possible to neg yourself? <laughs> I do it all the time. That's oh. when I noticed the second red flag. Oh. Jennifer and I were talking to another couple. Another couple, notice another couple. Uh, when she excused herself because she had to take a call from her boyfriend. I thought it was pretty rude, and that she, she's never done something like this before. A little later, she comes back and says that her boyfriend is picking her up, and she will leave early. Third red flag. Aww. 
she was very much looking forward to this night and suddenly she wants to leave early. You know when you can just tell someone isn't happy in their situation? Yeah, I definitely felt it right away. Yeah. Yeah, no, 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 it's fine. Three a red little flags while later. later, he gets there. And I shit you not, this idiot walked into the gala wearing shorts and a t-shirt. Bullshit! Shorts and a t-shirt's all fucked I up, I almost man. wanted to laugh, but I didn't want jeans. to embarrass him. Jennifer introduces me to him, and I make pleasantries. But I do make a joke about how must feel a little out of place. He said something like, nah, I'm not really sticking around, so not a big deal. Uh, okay, I don't really get what that has to do with anything. My point was that he was at a black tie event dressed like he's going to the gym. I don't care if you're five minutes late or five hours. That's weird. So you can already see he's getting an attitude with me for no reason. None. Nothing. I follow up with, uh, well, there are some really important people here. And his response was something like, I've met senators wearing flip-flops, so I think I'll be okay. Holy shit, I'm getting angry writing this. And you see what I'm talking about, right? You see what I'm talking about, right? He completely rubbed me the wrong way. So anyways, as she is leaving, I tell her to let me know if she gets home okay. It gets around midnight and she hasn't sent me a single message. So I sent her a text and no reply. I sent her another around 1 a.m. because saying I'm worried and I just want to let her know if she's okay. No reply. I have a hard time sleeping that night because I am genuinely concerned. It's just the Listen kind up, of this could save your I life. Am. I need to know my friends are okay or it bothers me. Bob girl! <laughs> oh, there's a hug it out. Hug it out. Hug it out. Funny bread, hands above the waist. Hands above the... W- no, 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 not we're, there. No, we're gonna, no, 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 no. We'll, we'll, we'll describe it. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We're going to have to put the hashtag oh, times up at the end of yours. <laughs> oh, that's me. Sir! Pardon me, excuse me, pardon me, excuse me, excuse me, pardon me, pardon me, pardon me, excuse me, pardon me. Hello, yes. Hello, friends. Oh. Uh, I just want to say before we get started that uh, Kathor, uh, fantastic Dom sub session. Uh, <laughs> and he is offering a, a 10% off coupon with the uh, coupon code F plus if you go to his website. So Make me drink my piss. <laughs> but you have right. to drink his pee to get the coupon. <laughs> Jimmy Franks, elegant voiced, infamous man of wonder. Please push that button. Push. Push! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, I wanted that one. <laughs> yeah, I got this. USA! 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 Uh, I mean, I could just freestyle on this for five minutes if you want. But <laughs> Jimmy Franks, we all wish we were dead, yeah. but please <laughs> help us pretend! Yes. How to Fake Your Own Death. A book on tape. Whether you're running for the cops, running away from home, or simply want to start your life again, sometimes in life you may need to fake your own death to escape. Here's some tips on how to try to fake your own death without arousing too much suspicion. Not too much, a little bit. Part one, disappearing completely. Decide whether or not you really want to do this. (laughs) Faking your death is against the law almost everywhere. Does your situation really warrant a death fake? Can you just move away? Are you being melodramatic? Never. No. You should only do this if you keep feeling that faking your own death is the only way to start over or escape, and you have no viable alternatives. Number two, stop using anything that will be traceable back to you. (laughs) Understand that you cannot use email accounts, 
Memberships, cell phones, or any personal details from your old life. That's good advice, actually. Yeah, yeah. Number three, watch out for little things that may give you away. Avoid like acting fishy beforehand. Also, remember not to use personal laptops, computers, or mobile phones. Uh, unless you, you can change the SIM card afterwards. They can be used to trace you once you're gone. Plus, people might notice that they're missing. Right. So stealing other people's phones. Yep. Number four, decide on a death method. <laughs> Suicide is probably the easiest bet. <laughs> what about... <laughs> Jimmy Franks, Jimmy Franks. Yes. You heard it here first. What Oops. about death by chocolate? Death by chocolate is also an acceptable method. Okay, just check All right, good. What about death by Tide Pods? Uh, also, uh, suicide is a more open and shut case. Chances are people will be less searching of closed circuit television footage. Less, yeah. Because it's the 1960s. Yes. And uh, personal records, etc. If they know you killed yourself rather than mysteriously disappearing. Chapter 5. Do it. Yeah! Do it, do it. Do it. Do Plan to note. Do it. Do it. Plan to note for your suicide before disappearing. Travel out of the city as far as you can and start again with a new identity. Be free. Woo! Listen, this part, part is important. Part two. Starting your new life. Eliminate all contact with people from your old life. Fuck them. Unfortunately, most people who fake their own deaths screw up this part of the process by cashing in on the insurance check they hope to get or getting a speeding ticket. <laughs> If you want to get away with it, you've got to disappear completely. Start by hiding out for a few weeks somewhere close by, like a cheap flop house hotel for a few weeks to lay low. Load up on groceries and hide out watching detective shows on television while the police decide to give up on finding you. When you have to go out, wear a disguise. Eventually, you'll have to start making your way elsewhere so you can go about the process of finding your new life. Chapter two, come up with an alternate identity. Who do you want to be now that the old you is dead? A suave gambler and poet from South Carolina who decided to forego his family's tuna cannery inheritance and move to Australia to work on cars? Yup. A small town bartender who had to move to the bright lights of Los Angeles. Yup. Decide who you'll want to be and start working on your new name. Make I'm it awesome. Princess. Jackson St. Blood Rock, pleased to meet you. Your new style. How will you craft your new image? Got clothes that are different from your old way of dressing and that will mask your, the new you people might see in the old you. Grow a beard. Shave your head. Fuck. Change your hair color. Wait. Woo. Oh. <laughs> Grow a beard. I knew it. Got me again. Uh... <laughs> Do whatever you need to do to cultivate a completely different style. Number three, make a fake ID. Once you've gotten your new identity hammered out and you're using it to introduce yourself as Horace McGillicuddy. <laughs> a common name. Sure, that works. Yeah. Find or consider crafting your own fake documents that will let you start your new life. <laughs> Shouldn't you have done that before you died? Number six, lay low. Becoming a public figure probably isn't the best idea. Get ready to but live a quiet and simple life. Wear a hoodie drawn over your forehead. <laughs> if you don't Woo! want to be seen clearly. <laughs> ah, questions and answers. Hey, good old questions and answers. Question, could I stalk people through fake social media accounts to see if they're still looking for me? Yes. No. Sure, but don't friend them. Yes. Don't comment on their posts. Don't fave slash like slash retweet them, etc. Be very cautious. And use Kathor's name. Mm. <laughs> Question. Why would someone fake their own death? Why not? <laughs> Some people might do it for financial reasons, like to escape a large debt. Others might want to completely leave their lives behind and start over somewhere new. Question. What if I have a paper due tomorrow? <laughs> Definitely fake your own death. Yes! Write your paper! <laughs> Wrong! Wrong! Bullshit. Uh, 
Ooh. Faking your death is a lot harder than writing your paper. <laughs> I disagree. Wrong. Sometimes you just gotta fake it. You haven't seen uh, the paper, man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> see, uh, oh, uh, this, is, this is a highly relevant question. It comes up quite, quite regularly. Could I burn a dead corpse to fake my own death with a suicide note, or is... Hell yeah. Oh, or is that too dramatic? Answer. That is very dramatic. <laughs> no. And also the dental records might give you away. All right, here what, we go. Question. What if I've question. never been to the dentist? Question. It, oh, did you have an actual question? Uh, what if I've never been to the dentist? Uh-huh. Oh, uh-huh. Yes, well. She's got the right idea. The, the all-cavity club, I suppose, yes. Uh, question, if I fake my death, do you think I can still use my friend's Netflix without them noticing? <laughs> Get your own Netflix, weirdo. Um... This is most likely very risky. <laughs> really? Since you would be using a trackable device to watch. Your friend may also check on your account and see recently watched shows, uh, resulting in confusion and potentially leading you to you being discovered. Like, I didn't watch that much Office this month. I don't know who this person is. Uh, General uh, Joe, warnings. Here we go. Ooh. Uh, if you get caught, there may be serious implications, not least of all from loved ones or family who will probably not understand your reasons for faking your own death. Uh, phones have tracking devices. Get a new one. It may be best to avoid doing this. <laughs> Consider all the grief your other family members or friends will have to undergo. And don't do this for the money because this does not work. You'll be caught eventually and have to put your family through a lot for your own and personal gain. Jimmy Franks! It's true, all of it. Yeah, no, it's right. Hey, WikiHow, uh, I've been looking to fake my own death, but <laughs> am I being dramatic? <laughs> I broke, I, I, I broke my family's heart. Am I the asshole? <laughs> Stog, move out of the fucking Stog, way. Stog, that's you. Stog, move out of the way. Stog, move out of the way. Stog, that looks just like you. <laughs> no, that's Stog. No, I'm pretty that's, sure that's, that's Stog. That's totally Stog. Yeah, I think that's Stog. <laughs> Oddly enough, I think I've seen Stog without his shirt more than bunny bread. <laughs> Wait for the end of the night. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. You gotta have proof. Yeah. Oh, here we go. All right. So, Buddy yeah. Bread, Yo. would you like to read for eight minutes or you just want eight minutes of that photo? Which would you prefer? I don't know how to read, so this is kind of a no-brainer. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. Whoops, I pushed the button. Bunny Bread, hey. are you ready to push that button? No. Push that button. <laughs> Again. <laughs> This never happens to Use me. your balls. There it is. Now it's a souvenir. Yeah. Hey, whatever that is. I'm a girl. <laughs> this seems like a bad idea. Bunny bread. Yep. As adults, we're all looking... How can we throw a Lego party? Well, I'm glad you asked. How to throw a Lego theme party for adults. <laughs> Forget the kids. Grown-ups want to have fun with Legos too, right? Right? <laughs> yeah, Linda. Lego Linda. A Lego party aimed at adults will involve food shaped like Legos. Lego color decorations. And even drinks modeled on the Lego theme. Oh, yes. Finally. While you could include the kids in such a party, eh, it's likely to be a lot more fun to be kept adults only. Ooh. I mean, that's just logic. Nice. And filled with challenges and treats that adults are sure to appreciate. Stop! Shot, 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 shots. 
<laughs> Number one, send out Lego themed invitations. Do I have to tell you this, you fucking morons? <laughs> send out Lego themed invitations. That's Lego 101. Many party stores have pre-made Lego party invitations or you can tailor into your own for more adult focused style. If you can't find any, impossible. Draw a Lego brick design using a computer-aided drawing program. Color in a typical Lego brick color and print off as many copies as needed. Got it? Use yes! Your, use your inkjet printer. Yep. Unless you're okay about kids coming along too, make no bones about the fact that this is not a party for kids. If, if you do have the party with the kids too, you'll need to organize a separate entertainment corner or room in your house. But wait, there's more. Along with a babysitter to keep a watchful eye on them. Woo! Woo. That's what I said. Schedule the party in the evening after the kids have gone to bed. Oh, yeah. This, this ain't Duplo, XXX. <laughs> XXX. Make it clear whether guests should leave the kids at home. Explain that it's Lego for adults only. Say that to your children. <laughs> you see, when Nothing mother and father love each other very that. much. As part of the invitation wording, it suggests that adults bring their sense of wonder and adventure. It's a night in which adults can play like kids again. <sighs> Include a fun and cheap package of Lego bricks or a kit with your invitations. Many dollar stores have small kits, all right? It's the motion in the ocean. So if you're limiting your invites to 20 to 30 guests or less, include a cute Lego kit along with the invite as an attention grabber. Or, 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 or add a minifigure to the invitation. Minifigure is not in quotes, but it's in quotes. Decorate Lego style. Woo! Here, you can let your imagination run wild as there are so many possibilities. However, to help inspire you, here are a few ideas. Use red, yellow, and blue. You got those? Everybody wrote those down? Okay, good. For the main color theme, as these are the principal Lego brick colors that everyone knows best. We got that? You want me to repeat that? Okay, so there's red, right? Okay, there's yellow, and then there's... Oh, shit, I forgot the last one. All right. Hang streamers in red, yellow, and oh, blue, yes, from the ceiling and from tables to give a colorful effect. Also, hang balloons up in the same colors, because fuck it, why not? All right. Serve Lego-inspired food, of course. The traditional waffle broken into pieces would make for a perfect Lego food, of course, of course. However, move beyond the predictable and give your Lego party an adult flair with some of these food craft ideas. Hang on, folks. It's about to get wild. Use a serrated knife to cut raw vegetables, people. Woo! Give the carrots, radishes, tomatoes, and cucumbers a Lego look by cutting up strips or blocks using a serrated knife. Partner with a little bit of your special guacamole. That means weed. Or hummus dip, and you have a healthy appetizer. For detailed instructions on turning vegetables and fruit into Lego bricks, see how to make... Why the fuck would you look that up? <sighs> Build a sandwich! This is the most exciting thing you've heard all night. We're still talking about Legos, right? Apply the Lego concept to your food and let your guest build his or her own sandwich. Lay out all the fixins, preferably from clean Lego containers, if possible. You know, there's been a lot of coming. And let your guests determine how big or how small their sandwich as an alternative to you can do build a pizza or build a taco or build a goddamn personality, you piece of shit. Can I eat the sandwich? Can I eat the sandwich? No! <laughs> Fuck. If you can't find Lego containers, display food items in colorful platters and bowls to the reinforce the Lego theme. Six, bake a Lego cake or cookies for dessert. Bake some goodies in the shapes of Lego bricks. For example, try creating a simple Lego building block cake using a standard cake mix, colorful frosting, and marshmallows. Yeah, I know. 
You're wondering, hey, Bunny Bread, how can I possibly do that? I'm a piece of shit who's attending a podcast thing. But wait, I will help you. And I love you. And I'm the only one that does out of these four. It's true. I hate you all. I'm the only it's true. one. It's true. I hate people in general, so that applies to you guys. Shut up! Woo! I hate people except when they're cheering for me. That's true. <laughs> Combine the cake mix ingredients according to the package directions. You understand that? Pour the cake batter into a greased and or floured cupcake or sheet cake pan. Then this bake this directive, then allow it to cool. Wait, wait, this next part is very I want a Lego important. party. I want a Lego party, it's not gonna a fucking happen. cake. Shut up! Where's my Lego party? Shut up! Wait. Then, fuck the cake. Make sure there's titties on it. Why, why didn't you just cake. start with that? Yep. Cut two marshmallows in half and apply each half to the cake to create a square. Hey, bunny bread. Fuck it. What? Show me your Legos. <laughs> <laughs> Show me your Legos, bunny bread. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. My code word was enacted. I don't understand what's going on now. Use frosting to hold marshmallows. He's a sleeper cell place. stripper. Frost liberally to using store budget frosting tinted with bright food coloring. Play crazy Lego building games. Oh, beyond the typical Lego games your child plays, these Lego games will be even more fun after a few absent cocktails. Because, you know, when you get your kids drunk, right? You know that. Yeah. I'll see you soon, princess. Anyways. Oh, shit! Uh, go fuck your Legos! Woo! Bunny Brad! You might be asking yourself, is this uh, prize really good enough for all these people to be humiliating themselves in these myriad of ways? But, like, look at this hat, man. It is a, it is a 3D printed WikiHow hat. Yes, of course that's worth drinking your own piss for the chance of it. Here we go. Here we go. F plus live is kind of mostly, basically, pretty much running on schedule. And that means that up last, we have Stug! <laughs> Stug, yes? you will be the final person tonight to push this button. Okay. And um, Stug? Why does this have a warning sign on it? Don't ask questions. <laughs> Stog, are you ready to push this button? How do I push it? With your finger, <laughs> presumably. I, I, there was push a cover over the good. button. I kept well, pushing. what you should do is wait. Okay, so read a WikiHow article about okay. how to lift the cover <laughs> this off of the no, button. No, it's not a button. There's like, a... it'll be like a 45 okay. steps to like lift the cover. We're just asking you to try, Stog. Off of, you remember when I said we were like basically on schedule? Oh, dear. Stog, do the opposite of that. I see the button, but I can't push it. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Here, let me let me help you, buddy. Okay. Let me help you, buddy. All oh. right. Oh, oh, okay. Hey. It's time for you to push that button. How do I? Wait. 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 How do I push a button? I swear to fuck, Stog, I'll push the button for you. <laughs> okay. Okay. I figured, I learned how. Yeah. <laughs> Our final preliminary article, How to Vomit While Driving. I love this fucking podcast. I love this fucking podcast. 
Okay, okay, this is gonna be an important life skill that everyone needs to learn, so I, I don't drive myself, I bike, but I figure that this, uh, these will come in handy as well. How to vomit while driving. Are you at the wheel and feeling ill? Yes. No. Many motorists have never considered what to do if, while driving, they become sick. Nausea and vomiting while driving are not merely unpleasant, but can be potentially deadly if handled poorly. You know, like vomiting in your own car. If you're at risk, if you're chronically motion sick or have nausea because of chemotherapy or another medical condition, being able to pull over and safely be sick might save your life. Okay, method one, anticipating the problem. Avoid driving. I don't like to editorialize, but if we weren't driving, what would be the fucking point of this article? Okay, number two. Yeah, that's exactly it. What's the point of any Wikipedia or wiki how article? What's the point of any wiki any, anyway? Take non-drowsy motion sickness medication before driving. That's point number two. What are you gonna do? You're gonna get it fucked up on Pepto-Bismol before you drive? Well, yeah. Fucking stupid. It's dumb. Don't do it. Live life do on it. the edge. Okay. Number three, stock your car with chewing gum and sick bags. Which do I use for which? So say your coworker needs to get a ride from you because their car broke down and they notice that your car is littered with chewing gum and sick bags. They're gonna ask, what's the chewing gum and sick bags for? And, there's, and you're gonna say, this is just in case I get sick. <laughs> <laughs> Be prepared if you are prone to vomiting. Stick bom vomit bags near the driver's seat, for example, with either paper or plastic bags and consider lining the passenger seat and floor with, pas with plastic sheeting, just in case. <laughs> Who cares if you get vomited? <laughs> Who cares if you get vomit on the other person? It's not important. The only thing, you gotta protect your vehicle. It's got, you need to keep, keep contain its blue book status. Okay, so chewing also helps to reduce nausea, for example, so keep a mild flavored gum handy, like Juicy Fruit, the most mild of gums. Yeah. <laughs> My old F plus eight, brought to you by Wrigley Chewing Gum. <laughs> Okay, action point number four. Eat ginger before you drive. <laughs> All of it. Yeah. Raw ginger, raw ginger. Grate it into your mouth if you have to. Just fucking eat it. Sometimes you can eat Marianne beforehand <laughs> as well. Just, just for the record. It I don't works. know what it that works. is. And the rest. <laughs> oh, uh, this, uh, this action point recommends some... Uh, Whiny, uh, whiny baby shit, like taking a supplement of 250 milligrams three times per day. Who the fuck has time for that? God. Okay, po action point number five. Drive defensively and learn the warning signs. If you must drive, drive defensively in case you need to pull over quickly. Stay in the outer lane, for example, and avoid expressways or roads where it is hard to make a quick exit or safe pull-off. Don't drive on the Autobahn and vomit it into your own windshield. The Germans don't like it. The Americans won't either. <laughs> Method two, reacting to sudden nausea. One, alert your passengers. Let your passengers know if you are suddenly overcome with nausea. Passengers can help either by giving you something to vomit to or in dire need by control, grabbing control of the wheel. This is why Jesus is there. You tell Jesus to take the wheel and then you vomit. Then you fuck ginger. Someone can also cup their hands as an impromptu vomit bag. <laughs> the important thing is that they know what is happening and do not panic. Two, try to pull over carefully. The most important thing is controlling the car and the ensuring safety of you, your passengers, and other motorists and pedestrians. Your clothes are the least of your worries. 
Bullshit. <laughs> if you are driving at a slower speed between 10 and 30 miles per hour, try to pull over. If that proves to be impossible and there are no or only a few cars behind you, slow to a stop, turn off your hazard lights, and vomit. Stog, I mean, if you're driving between 10 and 30 miles per hour, you're not drunk. Like, it's just, that's just facts. Don't worry about the reaction of other motorists in this situation. They won't tell you to fuck off or get out of the bike lane or do anything like that. They will just drive around you. At slow speeds, there is little danger in stopping of the road. Open the door and vomit out the door, if possible. Here, take this important literature. At higher speeds, use extreme caution. Do not stop in the middle of the road, drive defensively, use your indicator, and do not assume other cars will slow down for you. Action point four, vomit outside only under safe conditions. Slower speeds, you should be able to stop, open your door and vomit onto the pavement. However, this is very dangerous on faster roads and expressways. Even pulled onto the shoulder, you should avoid getting out of your car, exercise caution. It is better to hurl on your floor than mats than be seriously injured by another car or on the plastic sheeting you put in your murder death vehicle. Yeah. So far, this is all vomiting while s your car is stopped. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking for vomiting while driving. Yeah. Like, She's like, a busy lady I'm on the go. I'm not turned on yet, so <laughs> where is the vomiting while driving? Let's shoot for some multitasking here. J.G. Ballard's vomit. Crash to... Okay, action point five, vomit straight ahead. If unable to pull over, your primary aim should be to maintain control over the vehicle. Let's see what the question, let's see what the uh, communities have to say. <laughs> if I throw up and I am in the back seat, will my vomit get on the passengers in front? <laughs> what should I do if I pee and poop while throwing up in the car? <laughs> What, a what can I do if I cannot stop vomiting while driving? Oh, and you'll need a vomit bag and a bottle of water and also some breath mints and paper towels for cleanup. Well, I hope you all learned something. <laughs> Thanks, dog. Thanks. Stug! I can't believe we're running on time. Holy shit. It's like we're kind of competent. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Boots, are you ready? All right. Round four of voting is open now-ish. Remember, you get to see more of me if you vote for me. Just, just for the record. You get to see a lot more. But wait, 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 wait. There's, there's, there's penises. Shit. God damn it, Jimmy Franks. God damn it, Jimmy Franks. I'm losing my lead. I'm you vote for yourself. Do I gotta take my pants off? Yes. Yes. Oh, no, it's yes, not. No. I'm not allowed to do that in Portland anymore. God damn it. Oh, God. Jimmy Franks doing pulling ahead. If I had my phone, I'd vote for vomit. I think they voted. Touch, touch the other one. Yeah, there you go. That's how I get excited. Now reach down, reach down, like tease at it. Yeah. Finalist number four. Oh shit. Uh, is Jimmy Frank. Look at this motherfucker right here. Thank you.
We're going to take the very briefest break while I get the big board ready for our four finalists. There are more surprises. Go out, have a pee, have a smoke, have whatever you need. We won't be more than five minutes, so make it quick. But we'll be coming back with our final round. <laughs> 